Welcome to the Bhandara 2022. We wanted to celebrate this Bhandara in person for two days uh, in the place that we had reserved. Uh, but unfortunately, because of the weather conditions uh, becoming bad, we had to, at the last minute, cancel this event. I truly wanted to celebrate in person, uh, but uh, things like this uh, happen in our life for which we need to make adjustment. And I know certain people who had made plans, including myself, to travel, and so many other folks had to cancel at the last moment. We thought uh, that it's better to cancel because... Uh, the venue was uh, becoming unavailable uh, and uh, we thought that before people come there we could notify them and uh, so that they can cancel their plans and, and make other arrangements. Uh, so uh, one of the reasons I wanted to have it in person is this is a this is a big event for all the sevadars, all the satsangis. <coughs> This is a huge event for all of us and we I wanted to celebrate in a big way uh, by meeting a lot of you, uh, hearing a lot of stories from you uh, and also sharing my story. Uh, although I don't consider my story being that important, you know, I've been mesmerized ever since I met Ishwaji in this path and realized that he has so many followers who come from completely diverse background and I always considered myself uh, as a part-time seeker you know I would be busy most of the day in my own life uh, in my own job uh, and whenever I would get a little bit of secluded time I would ponder about things uh, but that will be a part-time activity and when I met some of you uh, in last few years I came to recognize that there are so many seekers who have chosen a very difficult script for themselves. As Master Ishuji used to say, that we have picked up a DVD, a script for ourselves as an individual soul, and we have decided to play uh, that script in this life. But the fact that we have completely forgotten the script that we had picked, and now we are a character in the script, uh, it becomes really difficult for us <coughs> to understand what's going on with us. So as I ran into a lot of you and shared my story and also got a chance to hear your story, uh, I had been mesmerized that so many people have picked such a difficult uh, script for themselves. And, uh, and a lot of people have changed their lifestyle around. Uh, people who were apparently born in India, who had been uh, in the presence of great master and other masters, have decided to come over to the United States and led a difficult life. Uh, so when I said we are all friends, welcome friends. Uh, so at, at the core, we feel that we have a friendship because there is a threat running amongst us that feels to indicate that we are all going in the same path. Our destination seems to be same. Our seeking seems to be same. Although this, the amount of seeking uh, that we spend time seeking inside or searching outside or the desires that we have in terms of spiritual knowledge that seems to vary and probably because of the script that we have chosen and probably also because of the deep impact we have had in our life in association with different masters and we have been through different paths all along and so I wanted to hear from all of you uh, by talking to you in person spending time uh, and marveling at the wonderful script that you have written for yourself and also share my script, whatever uh, small amount of time I've been able to seek uh, outside of my daily uh, routine activities. And I wanted to share that and marvel at a at, uh, variety of, uh, of seeking that is there and the level of seeking. In, in some of you, the amount of seeking is so great that uh, you, you can't live without thinking uh, about your master for a second. Uh, whatever activity you are doing, you are constantly thinking about your master in the background. And a lot of these things I was not aware of. I, As I said, you know, I was a part-time seeker. So I wanted to uh, sort of get a window into what, what goes on in people's heart and mind. And why is it that to, to take care of these disciples, these seekers, 
who have so much deep seeking that even the Creator Himself has to manifest amongst them. Uh, I remember once I, I, was, uh, uh, I was on a Europe trip uh, when Ishaji was, uh, was in London and uh, making a Europe trip. Uh, he was going to Bezalu and uh, so I, me and my family got a chance to, uh, to spend some time with Ishwaji while he was touring Europe and, uh, and as I was going to listen to his lecture, uh, you know, it was my habit that uh, I had some uh, audio recordings of Ishwaji on my phone which I would play while going to work and whenever I would have chance. Uh, so in this recording, he described how uh, our situation is as a common human, human being who have been going through all the pains that this life has to offer and also some joys that this life offers. And when our seeking becomes so great uh, because of how tired we become of all the ups and downs of this life, that seeking grows and grows and it reaches this point where even the Creator himself comes as one of us, lives amongst us and takes our hand and promises to us that he will never leave our hand. He will never leave our company, not only just in this life, but beyond this life. And I was thinking that on this trip uh, to Bezalu, when I was hearing this audio, look at our condition. You know, if you look at look around in this world, there is so much misery going on, especially at this time uh, of uh, Kali Yuga. Uh, where uh, there is so much, uh, uh, if you look at the economic condition, uh, it seems to be going down pretty rapidly. Uh, we just had a pandemic and a lot of people lost their job, businesses uh, lost a lot of their family members. We have had friends uh, close by who passed away in last couple of years. Our, our most beloved friend Ishaji himself passed away during this time. So I was thinking that okay, we are in such a, miserable situation and look at look at what creator is doing he does not want to leave us alone because we are suffering in this place he himself decides to take this form and lives amongst us and i was feeling guilty at that point that because of whatever i have done in the past because of what we all have done in the past we are dragging creator at our level so that we can sort our our issues through him how uh, how insecure we are, you know, how selfish we are that we are making the Creator come down to our level and and take care of our misery. And uh, I was quite uh, overwhelmed with that thought that we could be so selfish uh, that we are asking Creator to, to come here. But as my understanding developed over time, as I spent more and more time with uh, my beloved, our beloved Ishupuriji, I slowly came to realize that it is all game and uh, we decided to play this game. We de decided to play this game uh, of separating ourselves from the Creator and sort of create this opposite that we don't get to experience where we truly live. And so this is nothing but a play. And so we are all in the midst of the play and because of the nature of the play, of course we we don't realize who we truly are and this is this is just part of the play that is going on because creator decided to play uh, and he could he can play anything that he wants he decided to play uh, each each one of us with this completely different personality completely different role and all the ups and downs that we have written in our script and not only in this form but look at the nature, look at everything that is around us. And as I spend more and more time with Ishwaji, uh, not only in, in the business setting, uh, because he invited me uh, to join a board uh, of companies that he was running and also asked me to partake in as an advisor and investor. And not only uh, uh, in that role, but in other roles as a friend. Uh, just as a, having casual conversation, he would change things around and he would say that this is all false. This is all a play. This is all a game. At the end, only spirituality matters. At the end, only love and devotion matters. He would somehow 
a, in the message that that seems uh, uh, only for this world this physical plane this 3d reality we are living in like giving advice about a business and then slowly he would turn things around and he will talk about his master and i remember so many instances where a couple of us in a room uh, sort of after the board meeting we would sit together uh, ishuji would share few things about you know, the companies and inevitably i would see that the topic has turned to great master he would narrate so many stories uh, about what happened uh, so i thought uh, maybe you know the best i can do is to share some of these uh, stories with all of you because my intent was to actually hear a lot of these stories from you by meeting you personally and marveling at all the variety of scripts that you have chosen for yourself so let me be the first one to share a little bit of my stories you know although i don't consider these stories to be really important but this just gives me uh, a window may give all of you a window into this wonderful personality that we bumped into because of the script that we have chosen for ourselves and to to understand who this person ishopuri was you know we were looking at uh, ishopuri through our own individual uh, experiences uh, or uh, whatever we have gathered over time there's a word in uh, in hindi called uh, sanskar that is accumulation of all the karmas that you have done and that leaves a impression on you and so you develop your attitude based on that so we have we have come to know this person uh, ishopuri ji through our own individual uh, lens our soul or body or the experiences that we have had over a number of times uh, over a number of years and maybe in the even in the past for those who have been associated with him or great master and so i thought i'll offer uh my little experiences as my seva and share with all of you uh so maybe uh, i'll start from the beginning when i uh happened to discover him or uh as it is said that when the chela is ready uh not that i consider myself ready at all uh through coincidences master appear uh i didn't know i was that kind of a seeker yes of course i have been as i said you know i was a part time seeker i would sometimes read spiritual books uh would of course wonder uh what this world world is about why there is so much misery why am i suffering in particular uh what have what have i done to deserve this uh so as i was uh, suffering uh, in my own little world and complaining uh about all the problem that this life has to offer including problems with wife uh with the uh, kids with bosses with the government with everything that happens right there are there are too many things to complain about and uh we always compare ourselves with the the people who have uh more so that we can feel less about ourselves and then complain so i was also complaining and i was trying to make my life better in the process and in in my search and as the tools of the day uh, you know offer solutions i went to google i went to youtube and started looking for some spiritual uh, some lectures that sort of explain uh, you know how to interpret this life how to understand uh, what's happening in your your life how to seek solutions and i ran into after a little bit of search you know that day happened to be a wonderful day when i bumped into video of ishopuri ji and as i flipped through some of the youtube search results i dawned on me that here is a wonderful handsome looking person uh, and he seems to be giving a uh, uh, large lectures uh, that are uh, that are running 2 2 and 1/2 3 hour long and the titles of these videos sort of uh, uh, enticed me to to click on them and i flipped through a couple of pages and then i realized that i have to click on one of these and and hear what this person has to say uh, one of this video happened to be five levels of consciousness and the title really captured my attention i clicked on it i listened for a few minutes 
probably it was just not more than five minutes and I was totally captivated by by the way this person was delivering uh, succinctly all the messages and how clear and simple it was uh, I got hooked and uh, and the the hook never went away and from that day on this was in 2014 I believe around February time uh, or even maybe a little earlier and so that became my uh, next hobby so in fact the the impression was so overwhelming overwhelming that I you know most of the time I would pretend to do my job at work but I would be listening in parallel uh, to, to this man who is uh, delivering wonderful lecture about uh, the common problems that uh, that is in our head most of the questions that is in our head and he's uh, articulating uh, the meaning of a lot of these things that we uh, commonly experience and giving the solutions to them most of my questions seem to be answered and somehow as if there were uh, complicated puzzle pieces that were missing and this person immediately gave a, a fitting puzzle, a solution to that, and all my problems seemed to have gone away. And at least the mind seemed to be quite satisfied. Uh, but the mind being mind, it was again started to question some of the answers that, okay, this explanation seems good, but how do I know? And this, this man himself says that, oh, go check it out if you follow these steps that I have described then uh, you can you can find out the answer yourself you don't need to ask the the solution from me you don't need to you don't need me to tell you what the answer is you can discover for yourself in fact he encouraged that method so much that uh, there was a there was a time when I, I was going through some issue of my own and I thought okay you know I don't need to take on this uh, pain uh, on myself I should just go ask him for solution and so I had one of the meetings with him I told him uh, uh, master I have this problem first thing he told me was don't call me master and I was really hurt by that you know you are my master you know you initiated me so of course I'm supposed to call you master and yet there he was he sternly telling me don't call me master okay uh, I was really hurt but I said okay uh, I should call him Isho Puriji and from that time on I started calling him Isho Ji anyway in the meeting I asked him a few things that okay I'm having these problems please solve that for me and he said that why don't you go into meditation and ask your master I was really puzzled by that I can't do that that's why I'm asking you you know in person so that you can solve my problem and Anyway, I was quite uh, perturbed by that, that answer. But I realized this man is giving you the right answer, that he's not telling you what the answer is, because if he gave you that answer, that, okay, this is what it is, would you believe him? And I don't think this, this answer is fit for everyone, because the kind of questioning mind I had, even if he had given me answer, you know, I would have <coughs> kept questioning it over and over. I would not be satisfied till till I saw the answer myself. And I believe because of that, he uh, asked me to go into meditation and ask the answer from my master. Because he always said the master is uh, within you. Once he has initiated you, he has put a copy of himself inside you and he's connected with that copy all the time. And so he will give the answer from that place. <clears throat> so my adventure began after finding him on YouTube and I got a chance to meet him uh, the same year, 2014. And uh, uh, he in, in Southern California, he was having an event and we got to meet him. That was, I believe, February 2014. And uh, he said, looking at me, uh, you know, he didn't give much clue other than to say that, don't worry, you'll, you'll take your time. And he looked at my family members and said, oh, you're going to... Uh, progress pretty quickly and I was I was pretty happy though you know I said I don't care how long it takes for me just make sure that I'm on your list A that's all I care about you know I could be way down below in list A it didn't matter to me <clears throat> but I wanted to be in list A 
I can't take this life anymore. And I'm sure a lot of you had the same feeling that you did not want to be living this life anymore. But uh, because of the script that we have chosen, and it's a wonderful script, looking at after meeting this person, you know, if your life hasn't uh, changed in some way, uh, then then uh, probably you have you have long way to go. But for most of us, I think it, it touched in a way that I can't even describe. I can't even comprehend sometimes my own life. Uh, I cannot imagine that uh, coming to Silicon Valley uh, in, in San Francisco region, uh, you know, I would meet a person who is living in Chicago and uh, who is a culmination of of uh, all the spirituality, all the knowledge that is out there. He is uh, embodiment of, of that creator in this flesh form. And you don't get to realize by meeting him uh, just once, but over time you feel that there is something unique in this person. And it has touched you in, in different ways at, at different times. Sometimes things don't hit you. Uh, like I used to come for Bhandaras and uh, I would see a lot of people crying, including my family crying. And I would wonder, what is this drama? You know, why are you guys crying? You know, this is just a guy giving a wonderful lecture. You know, so I was at that point, uh, I, I felt that okay, this person can, uh, it's very eloquent. He, he can explain things very uh, uh, simply uh, and most of the answers seem to agree with what we are thinking. But uh, in terms of looking at somebody uh, in the physical form as the creator, you know, I my journey uh, hadn't reached at that point where I could see in that way that this person is a creator <clears throat> or has consciousness of a creator. We don't have an idea of what creator means. And these masters, like Master Ishupaji, who have come amongst us, have told us that it is you can't you can't see a creator in its in its own form natural form he's he's formless and it's we can't we can't comprehend it with our tiny brain uh, and so we can only experience it in the human form as a person living amongst us and this has happened over over centuries as long as there has been life in this planet and there have been seekers since then the creator has has come and lived amongst them in order to take care of them in order to to hear the call of their seeking uh, in their heart and attended to that call and and came and became friend and took them back to to the original source from where everything started so for me it was it was quite challenging uh, to to uh, to understand what's going on uh, and I, I often call myself a rock, you know, because it, because of, you know, the way I grew up, the way, uh, you know, I was uh, taught to believe in in individu individuality, and understand science, math, and do everything with your own hand. Believe in yourself. Don't trust others. Those were good founding principles. But at some point, I got stuck myself, you know, with all the uh, all the knowledge uh, uh, that I had accumulated, knowledge that helped me survive in this world. But that did not seem to explain everything else that was going on. Uh, so a lot of, lot of psychological things that were happening. And I'm sure that is true of all of you. And uh, so I could not find an explanation for that. And I was stuck and I was like a rock. I could not uh, understand why people are so moved by uh, being in presence of him. And yet I was completely unmoved. Uh, at least I did not feel like crying. I did not have tears. But uh, as I heard more and more of his talks, he always emphasized love and devotion at the end. And as I got closer to him uh, over time, uh, as we would discuss in, in boardroom setting and we would go out for lunch, dinners, uh, Fortunately, he gave me, me and a lot of others, uh, a, a wonderful chance to be close to him and just examine him closely as an individual being, as a person, person who was uh, close to 90 years old uh, when I met him uh, and uh, how sharp he was, 
how much knowledge he had you know how uh, what kind of jokes he could crack there was absolutely no boundary it if i was also 90 year old i would never think that uh, uh, he was not my friend because he was so senior he was uh, like my father you know i had a, a definite amount of respect for him but he would also talk casually you know there, there would not be any boundaries then i these things that he used to say in his discourses about having a true friend uh, finding somebody who would never leave you i understood the meaning of it uh, at least started questioning myself why don't i hear that part that he emphasizes so much about love and devotion why do i always gravitate towards uh, you know the some of the things like science related things that he used to talk about sometimes it used to mesmerize me that here is a man who still remembers uh, the basic of uh, sort of quantum physics say or he could explain sometimes uh, how the light is traveling from a great distance and how the the lifetime or, or the age of the universe is known today he would he would explains some of the subtle details uh, so so nicely cleverly easily uh, that it would really uh, surprise me that uh, this man can still remember in vivid detail all the technical things you know so uh, on that actually let me recount one story that uh, i just came to know a few months back and it totally blew me away so this was uh, uh, probably 2018 or 2019 i uh, as so i, I got initiated in 2014 and used to hear his lectures and uh, started to develop, develop some kind of bond where i would uh, send him mails uh, at times and uh, and because he also used to share a lot of jokes and different kind of uh, inventions uh, with a uh, lot of us you know probably he kept a email list through which he would uh, he would send jokes and so on uh, so he would send some of uh, these news articles to us and so i found this wonderful research article uh, where it talked about complex uh, computational algorithms so there are types of uh, complexity in computer science that are not solved today and those are uh, very well known uh, uh, problems it's called traveling salesman problem so imagine there are uh, 10 cities say and a salesman has to go from city to city uh, to sell things and what is th- and uh, these cities could be in different places and they could be far away and there could be a uh, cost associated with traveling from one city to another and the cost could be quite uh, varied uh because of the modes of transportation available so to to find efficient way to travel all the cities and sell goods it's a very difficult problem because the number of uh, permutation combinations that one could go through is uh, uh, very high and as the number of cities sort of grow in nature it becomes uh, uh, even more difficult to solve this kind of problem uh, so it it is known as a very hard problem in computer science so i ran into this research article where supposedly this uh, organism called amoeba which is a single cell organism is able to solve this problem and and a human being uh, who has been trained in in solving uh, complex problems and bunch of us put together the best of us put together cannot solve this problem and here is a single cell uh, creature uh, organism uh that is able to solve the same problem and uh so i i quickly glanced that article and i was amazed and immediately i thunk, thought of isho ji that he would really appreciate this and so this was uh, around in the afternoon uh, well it, probably it might have been uh, morning and i sent this article over to him and uh, so at that time uh, he was giving lecture somewhere and uh, he had a break and during the break time he looked at the article he read it he understood it completely and i had to read the article myself having been trained in computer science uh, it was little difficult for me to remember all the concepts and here is this man who quickly glanced at the article he went back after his break 
uh, tea break uh, and uh, resumed his lecture. And then he started saying that I just now got a mail from my friend in California and he talked about a discovery that is uh, that has been uh, done. Uh, it has been discovered by scientists in Japan and they have proved that this traveling salesman person uh, problem can be solved by amoeba uh, in, in a very simple way, in a very efficient way and there cannot be any more efficient solutions than this and he sort of described that problem. And so I didn't know that this had happened and uh, only after his passing recently I came to see his video and I was amazed that this person just by glancing this article which was which I thought required a little bit of uh, training uh, for somebody to understand what traveling, traveling salesman person is um, although this article was at a little higher level he did not go into the mathematics of it but he well understood uh, the complexity of it and he was able to so succinctly describe the problem associated with uh, with this uh, algorithm and how amoeba was able to solve it and so i was totally amazed you know being uh, uh, still holding uh, the idea that we ourselves with our abilities can solve all the problems that uh, this life has to offer uh, uh, so with that kind of notion you know i thought that okay this person really has his still all his mental faculties intact even though he's 90 plus year old and he can still remember the finer details of this uh, this kind of science uh, uh, technology uh, so that really truly impressed me uh, and because Ishiji was gone by then and I discovered it quite late uh, about this phenomena and and that involved me so that really uh, uh, you know I marveled at the person uh, who was actually uh, in our presence and do we truly know him and uh, the, the more as time passes I come to realize that really it's very hard for us to even get a, a sense of a, a tiny sliver sense of who this person was because this person was so uh, magnanimous so big so larger than life uh, that it's very hard for us to uh, grasp uh, who this person truly was and I used to feel that given his experiences that he shared with a uh, lot of us that he probably uh, lived life worth uh, 10 people uh, compressed in one and uh, 10 these 10 people being capable uh, of, of reaching pinnacle in their own field because he was uh, he was a civil servant in India he served for uh, government of India in various capacities and uh, if I see around me how many people are actually serving at that uh, higher capacities, very rarely, uh, you know, I find people, you know, who I know him, who I know them. And to, to have a person uh, that can wear so many different hats, like he was, uh, uh, he was a homeopath, he could read palms, he could do palmistry and he was good at that. Uh, he managed food corporations of India. He was a lecturer, he was a judge, and he was a great disciple and he was a perfect living master. Can you find somebody in your life who can wear these many hats and who could be in your company, who could talk to you one on one? He can crack jokes. The kind of jokes he can crack, I can't even uh, tell you here uh, because they will be uh, all R rated. And yet he would, he would talk with you. He would, uh, he would not make a big deal out of that. And so to me, it, it quite surprised me. A lot of people uh, from uh, what I hear got so taken aback that they thought this person cannot be serious. He cannot be a spiritual master because spiritual masters cannot, cannot have fun like this. and They need to be serious. But here is a person who is completely uh, opposite of what our idea about a person sh should be, uh, especially a spiritual master. So I was able to spent a little bit of time uh, with him and uh, he asked uh, one time he was uh, at our house and uh, he was sort of talking to me about his life uh, what happened when he came to United States how he uh, how different people helped him how he uh, especially he talked about uh, two of his he, he used to say black friends uh, Dr. Clarence Brinson and Johnny 
and how they set up vegetarian health society uh, and uh, invited him over and Ishoji was always ever grateful for uh, the kind of generosity that these two people had sh shown to him and a couple of months before he passed away uh, he happened to have a meeting with me and he uh, told me uh, that he now he's 90 plus year old and uh, it's, it's diff every master passes away nobody lives here for a long time and he I felt that he sort of was hinting that uh, the time is near. Uh, the reason he was talking to me and uh, I felt that he was making certain uh, preparation. Uh, I mean, only on, upon reflecting back, I, I realized that this is what he was hinting at. And uh, he was telling me that uh, this body is not going to live for long. And he has been serving his master for a long time and he will continue to serve him the best uh, he can uh, uh, while he's alive but uh, he was getting old and he realized that and so I felt here is a man who could wear so many hats uh, whatever job he wanted uh, he could he could have that in fact from what I understand after coming here uh, he could have got a job in in uh, any of the uh, government uh, positions uh, maybe like a cabinet minister or something like that uh, because he had been offered to serve like that and yet he ignored all of that because he truly wanted to serve his master and he he told me that okay he's not after money you know he doesn't have any desire to fly in the plane all around the world you know he doesn't need big houses he didn't have any attachment and uh, he all he wanted to do was uh, to be with his master to serve him and he was doing that while he was alive and in fact uh, the the last birthday we celebrated in uh, Schaumburg uh, in Chicago and I happened to be present there and uh, we uh, some of the staff members in, in, in the office in the company uh, they uh, brought out a cake and uh, we uh, sang happy birthday for him and the only desire uh, after blowing candles he, uh, I was just sitting next to him, so I was able to hear him clearly. And uh, so we brought out two cakes, with uh, three candles in one and and two candle in in the another cake. And so he blew the candles in the first cake, and then we brought out the another cake. And he said, "Oh, five candles, uh, five desires. Uh, I have only, uh, I don't have five desires. I have only one desire. All five are one, one desire." And so I felt that the only thing that was in his heart was to serve his master and to be with his master. And this was just, uh, this was the last birthday that we celebrated, uh, so uh, 26th November. And I think maybe a little bit earlier because he was going to go somewhere else for celebrating his birthday. So uh, I, was, I was fortunate enough to be with him and I was able to observe that this man who is capable of wearing so many hats he decided to give up all the hats uh, and yet come here and live in difficult situation uh, because when he came here he just came with few dollars in his hand and this was this was because he wanted to be with us be uh, with lot of seekers who were longing for uh, this message of how to realize themselves how to find themselves who because people we in this world are lost we don't know what is the purpose of our living and we are always seeking this answer that can comfort us that can truly uh, uh, make us realize that we are not just this body with this miserable script that we have picked for ourselves but there is a there's a greater purpose for why we have chosen this way and so this man decided on his instruction on the instruction of his master to come to this country and uh, some of you probably might already know that uh, he did not come here by himself but probably he was asked by his master to serve him uh, in the United States because things were shifting uh, all over the world and the spiritual spirituality was moving from east to west and that was uh, predicted by his master, great master uh, and he wanted to 
as he said he wanted to watch the show closely uh, but i think he wanted the the show to be created here and he was the mastermind behind it and uh, so you know as i got closer to him i realized that this person uh, has given everything for his master away and decided to live in uh, what seemed like a very difficult situation because when he came here uh, he just came with just few dollars and then he had to uh, in one of the videos he narrated the story of how he came here with just few dollars and how he could not even stay in the hotel because he did not have a credit card and hotels would not allow him to stay in and so he had he had bit of difficult time and but uh, because he was serving his master he was not afraid and he mentioned to me so many times that uh, that while he is serving his master he doesn't care he doesn't uh, nothing worries him and he gets all the strength from his master by serving him in fact when he was at our house uh, and uh, probably the whole and when he was in california we went and picked him up around 12 o'clock in the afternoon and a uh, bunch of us had uh, lunch with him wonderful lunch in in california uh, i am after california imr uh, and a lot of people were talking to him kept him engaged uh, after lunch uh, we uh, drove him uh, to our house it was a long trip so we uh, took him through uh, santa cruz uh, you know windy highways and uh, he really enjoyed the scenery and while coming with us he asked so many questions to us some some the questions were really trivial in nature like uh jagannath the new iphone 10 is uh, about to be released do you think i should get it and i was totally taken aback because uh, i i was i mean i used to have phones but i never cared so much about the the new upcoming phone and here is this guy a uh, spiritual genius uh, spiritual master perfect living master he's talking about getting a new iphone and he wants to know uh, what f- uh, uh, interesting features this phone has to offer and whether it was worth buying this uh, phone or not i was really struggling with the answer and fortunately my family was there uh, and and they uh, gave a wonderful answer that yeah you should get it because it has this feature that feature and as as i was driving you know i was trying to pay attention to the road ahead and also uh, uh, in the back of my mind constantly reminding myself that okay you are sitting next to a perfect living master so behave you know don't don't let uh, your thoughts run wild uh, because most of us might have seen that uh, we live in our own world and we have all kind of thoughts running and uh, sometimes i try to suppress my thought uh that okay i'm thinking uh, negatively about certain things you know or maybe even about him you know uh sometimes wondering whether he's just saying things to make me happy or uh, saying things to show off and so uh you know i would try to hide some of those things you know uh, and uh, so i was really struggling and he would ask trivial questions like okay what is cloud you know what is this cloud computing and we would try to give an answer so he would he would engage with us in in such a common uh, trivial matters and uh, so he spent a lot of time you know asking these sort of questions that was in apparently my realm and he came to our house we welcomed him in a really grand way because i thought that here is the uh, a prince uh, you know ishwar he was named ishwar um because a uh, great master wanted him to be named ishwar when he was born uh, his mother from what i hear wanted to name him uh, give him a different name but great master overruled and he said no he, his name should be ishwar so if great master thinks that okay this person who has come to this earth who has been serving humanity for a long time has been giving lectures for a long time and if he comes here he is really a chosen one he is really ishwar ishwar means god and he is a god personified and he is coming to our house and in fact he had called uh, me and left me a voicemail that he wanted to come and spend time with me and i was so thrilled 
just on hearing that so when he came to our house we put up a, a nice little show of uh, singing a song dancing in front of him uh, by then uh, uh, this was probably 2018 uh, 27 2018 and a few years had passed since i had known him uh, uh, known him sort of from a distance but uh, the same year a uh, couple of months before i had spent some time with him in london uh, and europe uh, and so i was able to spend uh, quite a bit of time uh, with him having uh, you know doing trivial things like having a breakfast with him uh, and uh, where he shared a lot of things about his life uh, and we had dinner uh, with him and uh, toshi ji was around she was kind enough uh, to accommodate us and we had wonderful experience in in a in a hotel in london and uh, just i'll take a diversion and there is a small incident uh, at the hotel uh, at the restaurant and so uh, the plan was made that uh, ishu ji would uh, would uh, come with us for dinner and so uh, at that time you know i did not have that uh, really close relationship with ishu ji i mean i i would only communicate through email and i had never spoken to him frankly and uh, he accommodated us in such a way that we were like totally uh surprised uh, and shocked that uh, this is a completely different person you know so uh, i used to maintain uh, a sort of distance you know you know that okay this person is a certain caliber and you uh, you know and of course given his age we used to uh, keep a distance from him not did not want to bother him so much and uh, the place where he was staying he said okay jagannath come along you know you can stay in the same hotel and we were so thrilled we uh, you know booked the hotel and uh, upon reaching he inquired about us you know and made sure that we were uh, uh, doing okay we uh, we had our uh, sleep we caught up uh, and he assured us that okay he is going to spend some time with us and uh, so the arrangement was made that we'll go uh, have dinner and then he called me uh, uh so we were staying in our room and he was uh, he had returned back to his room and he just picked up a phone and called my room and so i picked up the phone i didn't even realize that it was ishu ji on the other side so and he started speaking and he said uh, there are couple of restaurants people have suggested to me uh, which one do you want to go to and my i was a bit surprised i did not connect that okay it is ishu ji that is talking i thought who is this person and because i had not heard him over the phone so i did not know how his voice would sound so i was a bit uh, surprised and after a few moments i, I realized that oh my god this is ishu ji calling <clears throat> so anyway uh, i i uh, by then he had already said the names of the hotel and i was lost you know i had in fact forgotten what the hotels hotel names were anyway so uh, finally uh, i realized that it's ishu ji and i told him okay uh, i'm going to uh, try to make some arrangements uh, and i'll let you know which hotel sh- we should go to because he wanted my opinion on uh, which hotel we should uh, uh, be going where the food is good and so on uh, so i get the phone down and uh, my heart started racing i said oh my god we are going to go for dinner with him, with ishu ji <clears throat> so i decided to uh, check up on the hotel i mean this is quite unlike me i uh, you know i, I don't know how to plan things uh, but something uh, came upon me and decided that okay i should probably call the hotel ahead of time that uh, and make a reservation uh, this was in london and uh, i'd never stayed in london and and sort of uh, spent time outside uh this was our first trip and uh, so i decided to call the hotel make a reservation and uh, so we got the reservation uh, and somehow my attitude or the way i normally conduct totally flipped you know now looking back i i don't think it was me and i booked uber at the time and uh, uber uh, pro- i mean I, i had just got the uber app on my phone and figured out how to use it and uh, as as we got out of the hotel uh, you know us uh, and ishu ji uh, and toshi ji he he said oh you made all the arrangements that's good uh, so you booked the uber 
I said, yes, Sishwaji, you know, uh, I just learned how to book the Uber. And then he engaged in a casual conversation about uh, how he has also downloaded the Uber app and he just needs to set it up and he would get, you know, $10, $15 free for our first uh, couple of uh, usage and so on. And as we reached the hotel, uh, sorry, restaurant, where we were supposed to have dinner, where I had made the booking, uh, as we stepped out of the Uber and I saw a mass of people around the restaurant and there were, uh, it seemed like the, the restaurant was heavily booked and there were a lot of old people waiting outside, there were uh, people hanging around and I was a little depressed by seeing that scene that now Ishwaji and Toshiji is with me now I have to make sure that uh, they don't have to wait and uh, you know there is no place to sit outside people were flooding outside uh, uh, there was no place to sit even inside inside uh, had even less room and so conflicting things were going over in my head uh, what should I do and uh, I just I just walked up to the uh, the person who greets uh, in the restaurants, and so I told him I have made a reservation, and uh, he looked at the name and he said, "Okay, come along," and uh, they just immediately gave us a a, a table uh, uh, that could accommodate just five people: my family and and Ishuji and Toshiji, and I was so surprised. Uh, I was here. I was thinking that oh my god. Uh, uh, Ishwaji will have to Ishwaji and Toshiji will have to wait outside, and it had started drizzling. So how will I make uh, their their uh, company comfortable with us? And while I was engaged in this thought, automatically things became clear, and then uh, you know sort of uh, space was made automatically for us. And we had a wonderful time. I was able to share a lot of my. Uh, story and uh, Ishiji was quiet most of the time because he was smart enough not to speak when uh, a couple of ladies are talking and I also decided to uh, keep quiet uh, as much as possible uh, so I was I got a little chance to uh, spend time with him and uh, I you know I'm I would say I'm no one you know and looking back how my life has completely turned upside upside down uh, I cannot recognize that this is the script I have chosen for myself and, and what a wonderful uh, uh, thing that we all of us even though we have come from completely different background uh, different religion race country uh, and yet we find ourselves in being a disciple of this man who has somehow impressed in our heart that he is our friend and uh, we miss him and uh, that's why we are celebrating this wonderful day because uh, I, have, I have myself uh, you know attended so many of the bhandaras that he used to conduct and uh, most of the bhandaras uh, I, would, I would initial couple of years I would just come like routinely spend few days go back uh, get a little bit of my battery charged as I, as I said I was like a rock and it took me quite some time uh, to uh, to become mellow and realize that I don't have any control and he held all the strings and uh, as I started seeking more and more as to what what the meaning of this love and devotion is I think he he helped me overcome uh, the 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 difficulties that I was uh, feeling in my head mostly it was mental and uh, mostly it was uh, removing all the obstacles that I had created for myself and but without him I don't think I, it, it would have been possible and I was able to feel in his company the love that he is uh, showering on me uh, because at times you know when I attended Bhandara uh, I could not stay for a couple of uh, days and I remember one incident where just after a day I had to leave because of my work pressure and then he came to know that I'm leaving and he called me and uh, and he gave me a prasad a couple of days in advance and he said I'm giving you great master's blessing here is a prasad go and share with your family and I was so touched that why is this man caring so much about me you know I'm nobody you know there are a sea of people here <clears throat> and uh, there's so many followers of him and uh, I was uh, really touched 
uh, by that gesture of him and so many of other uh, incidents that happened over time and i was i used to think that uh, uh, you know uh, like everybody else i'm just doing seva and one time while taking a prasad from him he said uh, you have something uh, for me you know you have to do some work for me and i thought that okay i need to redo the isha web page uh, because that's my sort of closest technical skill i i you know if i imagine uh, that is the closest thing i am capable of doing in terms of seva i don't have any construction background i can't uh, you know help construct his uh, meeting hall that he want, wanted to do, to build and i'm staying so far away in california uh, it's it's uh, really uh, logistically it's impossible for me to you know participate in uh, his all his activities uh but but uh, he through a lot of hints um and uh, i'm sure for a lot of you he also said so many things to to change your personality from uh from whatever you were or whatever you were seeking uh to the person that you are right now and without him i don't think it would be possible and definitely i won't be the same person that i am right now uh is everything great in my life no i'm still seeking uh, i'm seeking as hard as i can but uh, uh, you know i'm also trying to honor uh, the word uh, that uh, he took from me you know he, he i was as it is very hard for me to sit here uh, and and give any lecture he knows that uh, yet he wanted me to do some seva for him and so uh, after struggling quite a bit i think i'm i'm ready to give up and surrender to him and whatever small effort i'm doing uh, i'm trying to serve him as he served his master for all these years uh, in difficult situation and he didn't care about it and uh, he used to say that uh, as i was saying earlier he spent a lot of time at my uh, house and i told him at the end of the day ishu ji i'm tired you know how are you able to talk for such a long time and not feel tired we offered him tea uh and he barely drank uh, maybe one fourth of the tea and uh he would just uh, uh take his palm and wipe his face and he would feel fresh and uh but uh, not for me you know i was uh holding attention to giving attention to somebody for uh half an hour uh, itself is, is challenging for me and listening to this great man and his stories and making sure that I'm, i don't offend him by asking him uh, things over and over you know i was i was uh, uh, i had to pay a lot of attention and this man who talked for maybe 5 6 hours continuously was not at all tired so i asked him how is it that you are able to at this age you know go around uh, all over the world because he traveled to to europe india and various other places and he said that when you are doing great master's work uh, you don't get tired you know he gives you all all the energy and so with these things he always constantly reminded me that the only thing that is important is a uh, seva for your master because that's what he was doing and with my uh, little effort here i am also trying to do the seva for him and seva to all of you and i know all of you are doing the same thing and we are walking on this path together and uh so with this i am going to uh, uh conclude my talk for the day today and there are a lot of uh devotees of him who also want to pay a tribute to him so i thought that uh, in this uh, bandara day uh, we'll all get opportunity to uh, do a little seva for him Uh, sometimes by singing bhajan or giving a little talk or sharing or part of the story so we'll do that now and i'll go away for the rest of the day but i'll have uh, rest of the uh, sangat family members offer their seva seva uh, i'll join you back tomorrow and i plan to share lot more story tomorrow and hopefully uh, you'll all join me again 